Garino's done a wonderful job facing off for Maryland. The Raker has an underhand, kind of old school grip, has used the speed. I got him at over 70% in this NCAA tournament to come off the bench in relief. He was marvelous against T.D. Erland in the quarterfinals. Maryland really neutralized Trevor Baptiste in the semis. Now facing another top five faceoff man in Jake Withers. Marino picked the right time. Regular season, mid-50s in terms of his winning percentage. And to go through that gauntlet of players and be over 70% is incredible. Albany, the great days. We watched them at practice yesterday, Quinton. It was like the Wild Boys, guys with gold chains, mismatched jerseys, Pearl Jam rocking in the background. They were loose and as fun as any of the four teams that we saw practice yesterday. They are a lovable pirate ship, all shapes and sizes. And they've got one of the best face-off men in the country in T.D. Irwin, the freshman. He'll go to work against Maryland's Austin Henningsen. Doug Donovan, Peter Buchanan, and Jason Parks, our officials, the second quarterfinal here on the campus of the University of Delaware. That's a lengthy adjustment. Albany has never been to championship weekend. Quarterfinalists in 2014 and 15, losing to Notre Dame both times. Erlin so good in last week's win against Carolina wins the opening draw. And the Great Danes hit turbo right away. This is an offense that is on. You and I did that game in College Park. It was a home hum first half for Maryland in the third quarter when the Terps turned it up. It was Rambo who essentially said, give it to me, I'll put it on my shoulders. Such a money player. Henningsen and Erlin and Erlin two for two. After a dominant performance last week against Carolina. Guys like Muller and Young, Newfelt and Brozowski each have six goals combined. Isaiah Davis Allen, a catalyst for fast breaks. Brozowski can't pick this one. Albany three for three on faceoffs. Fields. And those goals in East, they, they go, they're worth more than one from an emotional standpoint. From getting, Erlin wins another face-off. This is Jack Bergmaster, so pounding, as well as anyone in college lacrosse. 114 points now for Fields, tied with Steve Morrell of UMBC for fifth on the single-season scoring list. All-time record, Albany's Lyle Thompson, 128. That shot placement is just downright nasty off the goalie's left ear. Muller's in decent position talking to Connor yesterday, he says Muller will lock up in his hole, but he doesn't throw very, very many checks. Procedure call against Maryland, that's one. Eli Lazda brings it up. Three procedure calls at the face-off X, and the opposition goes man up for 30 seconds. And read when there's no script to follow. On both ends, Anish. Uh, Albany will do it to you, as we see Henningsen, who can take it himself. He thought about it. Here's the show that's a pass it was. Heacock was chasing it as if, as if Henningsen was going to shoot it. The Rambo Heacock relationship is straight out of the odd couple. Oscar and Felix and Carcaterra, I know they were brave enough to get in a car with you. These guys are a blast. I'll tell you, I tried to convince my wife to let me stay down there a couple extra days and check <laughs> up with Rambo and Heacock and hang out in College Park. Knuckleheads in the complimentary sense. Exactly. Right? They, they love exactly. life, they're fun, and, and they're perfect for this team because you have the gauntlet of a college lacrosse season. It's not an easy grind. It starts in August, and I think they find that balance with those two seniors. They got a type A coach, too, and so they kind of cut it loose and keep everybody up having fun and smiling. John Tillman told me last week he's been amazed how much Matt Rambo has matured in his four years in Maryland, had some off the field issues early in his career. He's come on now and become a leader for the Terps. 
China Shop. Remember, they have Stone Sims, who's their number one lockdown defender, held Ben Reeves to one goal. They like Delui on that matchup because he did well in round one. I think you, you switch it up here. You put 25 in purple on one and white. Rambo comes away with the ground ball off the faceoff. All carriers are winning all of them right now. Another procedure call against Maryland. That's big. That's two now. One more, and Albany will go man up. On the next violation, and every successive violation. As a young boy, you saw something in him. But when he became an assistant coach for you, when he was in his early 20s at Maryland, running your off. Assist number 40 for the Terps all-time leading scorer. And he has had a hand now in four of the seven Maryland goals. John Garino with the face-off X for the Terps. He was 9 for 20 in the regular season win against Albany. Here comes Newfelt. And a timeout by Maryland. Right now, I think he needs a timeout. You, you, you go off sides, and then you lose the restart for transition. Al Albany needs to take a deep breath and, and restart this game. And Maryland is winning the battle of the face-off X. Another opportunity for the Terps. In transition, Kelly too high. You can't. Syracuse 2004, those great elite attackmen found ways to get the dirty ground balls. Another face-off won by Maryland. <coughs> Albany won the first five. The Terps have won five of the last seven. The Heacock in, in Rambo episode. Heacock showed me his golf swing earlier this season, and uh, Rambo wanted Heacock to demonstrate it because it was so bad, and it looked like a caveman wielding a club. <laughs> well, Quint, this is a problem for Albany. If Maryland is going to control the X and the faceoff dot, they're going to control possessions, and if Albany doesn't get possessions, uh, their defense just can't stand out there for this amount of... This looks like he's skating around, right? He's breaking records every time he gets into the box score. That was his 54th goal of the season. Tied now with Princeton's Gavin McBride for the Division I lead. He said he was a left-handed center, a passer. How about the fact Albany was his only scholarship offer? Everybody thought he was too small and skinny. Last five, including nine in the Big Ten tournaments when he was named MVP. Maryland's now starting to take control at the X behind to John Garino. Garino is six for six. He's had his moments this year, the senior. He was good against Penn State, Michigan, North Carolina, and Villanova in relief off the bench. T.D. Erland right now, frustrated, Quinn lost nine of his last 11. This is the first time that he's really been in a position where he's taken a beating. Big time high school wrestlers, you know, Quint, the mentality is there, but Terps certainly been able to answer Erlen. The run, two pole goals, well that was the DMC. Peacock, Rambo, Moss. Garino, seven for seven now on face-offs. Maryland is 110 out of 17. Yes, exactly. It's like, oh, that wasn't good. That's not going to look good in film. Nationally, on film. Erlen wins the faceoff. Fires one. Ooh, hit the defender. Mac Ponds right in the chest. Breaking out. Then initiate with seven. That's Rotans. He's got two goals. But the complimentary scorers really haven't been brought to the fire because of Rambo's first half. Absolutely dominating, but look for those guys to find the scenes now with all the attention on one and white. We have a face-off procedure call on Albany at TD Erlin, and Maryland has now won 11 of 19 at the X. There's a long debate during halftime about before the third quarter. The referee's point of emphasis for Henningsen, 18 and white, saying that his top hand was flat. Scott Moore was complaining that he was using his hands too much in the initial clamp and kicking the ball out with his hands. The ref wants a grip on that top hand. Henderson's hand is too flat using the ball. 
that by rule he has to wrap his fingers around the stick and they must be on the ground. Great demonstration there by Park. Sometimes those face off laws get a little polluted. Stopping Matt Rambo today. That's a weight room goal. You know what coach said? Get in the weight room. Get stronger. How about Garino right now? Over to the freshman TD Erlen. Garino really became a viable option this year as a, as a one two punch. They also have Will Bonaparte on the sideline who took some draws against Rutgers. Bonaparte was the number two guy last year. Garino fell out of the circle of trust last year. Remember, it was Charlie Rafa's backup a few years ago, and it was that Villanova game where John Tillman was looking for an answer. Went to Garino, he won some big faceoffs, and he's now back in the circle of trust. You fall out of that circle of trust, sometimes it's tough to get back in. Red hands, three times since winning it all, end up come up empty handed. And that could hang over this team's head next week, you know. I, I don't think Coach Tillman addresses it, he doesn't have to, but folks like us, the media, are going to bring it up quite a lot over the next week. It's a burden that these young men shouldn't have to carry, but they do. Tillman told us something last week. He said, I understand. They are probably the best fifth and sixth options in all of college lacrosse because of their athletic ability. They can shoot from about 10, and they can beat you off the dodge. Bernhardt was an outstanding high school football player and option quarterback in Florida, and it turned out an offer to play football at Navy to come to College Park and follow in the footsteps atmosphere. The defending champs were in town, and, you know, we saw the kind of first half that Albany came out with, the energy they came out with. And is part of this maybe losing the turbo? Carino won the faceoff. I don't think so. And he shot out Albany three times this spring. Standpoint. I just don't get why he doesn't have the alpha male big time midfield tag to him and his production's insane it, it, it's off the charts compared to others 42 goals now this year man high school with a long ball there's some of these guys that come into the college ranks with so much offensive experience look at a guy like scott ratliff from loyola played all over the field in his high school days same with cj costabile when they won the championship 2010 for duke accustomed to playing Offense and defense with that six foot pole. Threats. Erwin wins the face off against Henningsen. Well, Paul, what about this game as a dress rehearsal for the Maryland face off men for what they face in Boston? Ooh, we got the champ lurking, man. Is Trevor Baptiste, Baptiste is he he's now, the best I've ever seen? I was going to ask you, is yes. he now in the all time tier? Yes, he's the best face off college specialist and he's really not that much of a specialist this kid likes to shoot and bring it down but let's just talk about what he does at the dot he, he's the best i've ever seen Eccles double free spirits and, and, and it's refreshing quite it, it is yeah. and, you know in lacrosse circles for a long time there was this stigma around canadians and native americans and coaches wouldn't say it publicly but, you know, in private, they would say, well, you know, you can have one or two on a team. You can't have a team full of them. Birdmaster scores for all. It's culturally. It's, it's very, very profound when you think of what these kids learn every single day in the locker room. And he's shown that you could win with numerous Native Americans and numerous Canadians. You just have to find the style and plug guys in in certain spots. So they all complement each other, not only on the field, but in the locker room. That is clearly in tune to the all the turnovers of some of the other alpha male attackmen in the country, guys like Ben Reeves and Matt Rambo. He's got way more to Major League Lacrosse GM. I'm spending a lot of time each and every year watching the seniors of Scott Mars. You know, that, that Bertrams had a big goal on Friday night, an Albany alum. And the Maloney is also on the Bay Hawks. And Dave Connor told him, he says, we're going to try to draft an Albany guy every year. Because of their options kind of at his disposal, how do they play that is going to be absolutely critical to be the outcome. It's amazing. You mentioned the faceoff vex. John Garino came in for Austin Henningsen, uh, Austin Henningsen in the second half of that game against T.D. Erlin in Albany, and he wins 12 of 14 faceoffs. An unbelievable second half for Garino. So that's obviously going to be a big story coming up here because Denver has Trevor Baptiste, of course. 
And what Denver was able to do here uh, in this tournament has been unbelievable. And Trevor Baptiste, he really is the key to them no matter what. He's winning 90% of his faceoffs. I mean, when you have possession after possession after possession, I really don't care who you have on the offensive end. By the way, Denver has really good players. <laughs> yeah, but if they, I, even I if they didn't, they'd still be in every game. Yeah. Because the other team can't score if they don't have the ball. They're, they're in essence playing make it, take it lacrosse, right? Because Denver has the number one offense in terms of scoring efficiency. So he wins the draw. You take it down to their offense. They put it in the back in the net. And you go right back to this guy who's absolutely unstoppable. And what really is compounded, compounded effect that he Biggest factor, though, in this game, face-offs. X marks the spot, and that's where we find Paul Carcaterra. Oh, yeah, Nish. We can talk about the keys to this matchup until we're blue in the face. But the game of lacrosse is full of runs and momentum swings. And this one will be determined right here. Trevor Baptiste is the champ of face-offs. And in my mind, the best who's ever played in college lacrosse as a face-off specialist. Lightning hand, quick, quick hands, brute force, and masterful technique make him the ultimate matchup nightmare, and wing play becomes almost irrelevant. If Baptiste gives Denver 12, 15 extra possessions today, Maryland will need to be near flawless shooting the ball, clearing, and first time of ground balls. Baptiste on this season, better than 75%. In the NCAA tournament, 90%. He has tilted the field in Denver's favor to the point of people saying it's an unfair advantage. Make it, take it. Buy one, get one free. Denver. Our eyes on the face-off X, the great Trevor Baptiste, a first-team All-American, a finalist for the Tawartan Award, which goes to the best player in college lacrosse. Against Austin Hennigson. Maryland controls the ball off the opening draw. We've got a loose ball hold. Some serious heat. The top six for Maryland, that's the starting attack in the first midfield, accounts for 83% of the Terps goals, and five out of those six, or 83%, are the Terps. The Terps two for two on the faceoffs. A faceoff win for Maryland in this game is a juice, it's a juice play for the sideline. You're right. Warton Award finalists. That honor goes to the top player in men's lacrosse. Rambo with a goal so far. Baptiste one for three on faceoffs, two for four on faceoffs rather. But Maryland is winning the possession game, and if the possession game is close, Quint, I, I don't know if Denver has a chance. Now Denver's so used to having a massive almost 10 to 12 to 15 extra possessions per game. You look at their defense, Denver's, on paper it looks good. 13th in scoring defense in the country. You adjust that for the amount, the fewer amount of possessions that they face this year, it swells to the 42nd best defense in the country now on a per possession basis. But again, that piece is the ultimate concealer. You win possessions, you don't have to play defense. 
Maryland, however, program that always has had fun and always has had characters. But Matt Rambo, make no mistake about it, as much fun as he likes to have, he is a fierce competitor that wants to attack you. How about Austin Henningsen now? Three for six at the face-off X against Baptiste, who had lost just five face-offs in the first two NCAA tournament games. Maryland fired five shots during that possession, but at even strength, as you mentioned, some chaos defensively, Dylan Balls capitalizes. Baptiste wins the face off. Maryland had one, four out of six. He can take guys out of their element from behind the cage or up top. He's got a bright future. See, Henningsen already has tied up Baptiste long enough to make this a free-for-all. Baptiste still comes away with it. John Tillman can live with that. Yeah, but Henningsen ties him up for a three-count. Today, he's held his position high, and I love the bounce in his step and his body language. Paul, I wonder how much of that has to do with the field you know, with the field not giving as much bounce, can you almost cheat top? Yeah, and if you're Alex Reddy, you know that these guys are going to be throwing these at least, you know, knee up. But what you mentioned, too, like, he, he, he's the club. <laughs> the gregarious. But he got the Rambo. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've talked about it throughout this postseason. They're the Oscar oh, right. Felix of college right. lacrosse. And Paul, you, you played midfield. What he got just did, what's the degree of difficulty on that? Look, big time. Hey, you look at what he did there, it's a desperation. You could call it luck, but his intent was to score. So I'm sure he's done it before, but the biggest factor there is you've got to understand that you're going to take a beating, too, a lot of those times when you're in the middle. If he used to pick the ball up, there's going to be defensive pressure there, so he almost had no choice. Only one and one. I think if Rambo's to take the Terps to Monday, he's a bigger second half. Face-offs, even at five apiece in the first half, it's Baptiste and Henningsen have taken all the draws for their respective teams. And we've got a whistle. And it's going to be Denver ball off the... Your guy, I think the difference between an American field player and... Canadian box player, they use that top shoulder so well when they go underneath and really don't need the opposite hand. Maryland continues to tie up Baptiste. Maryland's to Maryland. So 6-6 six, six at the X. Legitimately curious. So you, you know, you went to Johns Hopkins, you know these things. Guess who on the way? New friends. Weird all American honors. Too hard. Let's bring the focus back on lacrosse and getting the championship weekend. Yeah, Christian Bergdorf told us they brought more energy to practice, more focus to the weight room and film sessions, and they've instituted a, a no alcohol policy. This team has used that loss to mark that as a wake-up call. Now the Denver. Three goals. First attack. Starting attack for Denver. Bagels. There's Baptiste off the draw. With a slight advantage at the face-off, Fox. They've won 8 out of 15. Time it's John Garino from Maryland taking the draw. So John Tilden throws in a little wrinkle. Garino has had moments this season where he's been the hero for the Terps against Albany. He was 12 of 14. Doesn't use the motorcycle overhand grip. He actually goes to the old school under grip, and his move is based on quickness, timing that whistle and raking it out. Good anticipation by Tilden. Seeing that it's about staying after practice with head coach John Tilden. During the fall, during the spring, bucket of balls, those two going at it for 45 minutes after practice. Just the two of them. Now they got a hold. It's against Denver, so Maryland gets the ball. Final 30 
30 seconds of quarter number three. Young over to Bernhardt. Well, the champ, Baptiste, who's at the X right now, he's had a deal with Austin Henningsing. So when I spoke to Chris Mattis, the face-off specialist coach for Maryland earlier, he told me they're going to give Baptiste a heavy diet of Henningsen, and then they roll out Garino, who he calls the relief pitcher. Different style, and it kind of throws Baptiste off his game, and it's been successful, guys. Big round ball off the open face-off of the fourth quarter. Now we got a loose ball push. Denver ball. That's yeah, like get a 95 mile per hour flamethrower, and then you come 57. Ethan Walker. This is a kid. Back to back years in high school at the Culver Academy. 100 goal seasons. He's the leading scorer on this team. It's not Connor Canizero. 57, the freshman. He's slippery. He's got incredible hands and awareness. His numbers from his senior year in high school, absurd. Video game. 23 games, get this, 108 goals and 53 assists. State. This is a fun-loving bunch. They radiate nonchalance, leaked blonde hair, mohawks, but there's a toughness and grit about this team. And you look at what they have in the face-off X and in goal, that gives them a chance in every game. Their formula for success starts with possessions. And Jake Withers, the senior from Ontario, Canada, has been outstanding this season. 66%. That's fourth in the nation. Last five face-offs against Towson. Guess who won it? Withers, hard-nosed, scrappy brawler. Multiple. That's where they'll do their damage on the wings. The Buckeyes 9-0 this season when scoring the first goal in the game. Withers and Austin Henningsen at the face-off decks. It's the Maryland Poles. Here's Bryce Young with a bouncer. Who backs it up? It's Ohio State's closest. All right, the shot. Face-offs even at one apiece. Withers and Henningsen. And the Buckeyes come away with this one. It's Freddie Freibach. Freibach with a bouncer. Morris got his cross on it. The rebound is loose. Look at this. Man, this is physical. This might be a war of attrition. Freibach lost his stick. Timeout called by Ohio State, so Nick Myers starting spot. So they brought Shellen from the midfield, took a defensive midfielder who's accustomed to playing up top behind the cage. So a little chess match there. A right and finisher who also played volleyball and football in high school. Another 
scrap the face-off edge. It's Frybot on the wings to get it for the Buckeye. Frybot, 44, and Scarlet is awesome on ground balls. His skill set, his speed, his ability to break defenders down, it's there. He's just not accustomed to making plays. You know, early on, the big stars have been quiet. We haven't seen much from Fennell and LeClaire, Rambo, or Kelly, or he comes. Great point, Denise. And, and Paul, I want to get your opinion. In championship games I've played, it accelerates at X behind the cage. That's Connor Kelly. He's got 45 goals coming into this season. He's the leading goal scorer in Maryland history for a single season from the midfield. you got to show early on that cat. Kelly had three goals in the semis, five in the quarters. John Carino took that face off for Maryland. Buckeyes, they'll have the draw. 5-1 Ohio State dominating the X early. Final 40 seconds of course. Senior day when they beat Denver in the horseshoe. And, you know, the first thing you say when you see it, all in. These guys are all in. Trevor Hodges. One of the midfielders has what they call Red Salon, and he did the Mohawks and the die jobs for most of his Buckeye teammates. Defensive midfielders, DeMillo, Kelly, and Maltz with unassisted goals. Dylan, Matt, and Colin, the starting attack for Maryland, and known as Run DMC. Maltz began his career at Syracuse. Buckeyes win the draw. Here's Eric Fennell. The senior class has been three times. So you lean on the leadership as a freshman. You're not quite sure how to handle it. You don't feel the pressure that they do. And I would say for each of these guys, respectively, it's about their careers, their four years here at Maryland, rather than the previous 40 teams. You know, you look at Saturday's games, an absolute slugfest. The defense has been outstanding in the first half. I agree. I've got to see the Buckeyes do more formations that get LeClaire off of Muller. they got to switch some matchups, and that's what Maryland, conversely, has done offensively. They've really isolated. They've changed skills. First goal in more than 24 minutes, and the McConaughey's third of the season. Two have come this weekend. Marino won the draw. Had a trail checked away. Top two defenders for, both, for Maryland have almost wiped out the alpha attackman for each team, Leclerc and Rambo. Garino's done a wonderful job facing off for Maryland. The Raker is an underhand, kind of old school grip, has used his speed. I got him at over 70% in the NCAA tournament come off the bench in relief. He was marvelous against T.D. Erlin in the quarterfinals. Maryland really neutralized Trevor Baptiste in the semis. Now facing another top five face-off man in Jake Winters. For Maryland. Have almost wiped out the alpha attackman for each team, Leclerc and Rambo. Garino's done a wonderful job facing off for Maryland. The Raker is an underhand, kind of old school grip. Has used his speed. I got him at over 70% in the NCAA tournament. Come off the bench in relief. He was marvelous against T.D. Erlin in the quarterfinals. Maryland really neutralized Trevor Baptiste in the semis. Now facing another top five face-off man in Jake Winters. Torino picked the right time. Regular season, mid-50s in terms of his winning percentage. And to go through that gauntlet of players and be over 70% is incredible. Hello, feeding the crease. Did he ride with Clark? I didn't see him at the Frozen Four or wrestling. Just straight up. John Garino with the face-off X for Maryland. And Garino has come off the bench to win four out of six. And you see, Withers has changed his stance. He's now standing up with a conventional grip. And he's perplexed, bewildered. And 12 and White is taking this game over. That's two face-off violations now for Ohio State. Yeah, maybe a little Ohio State run here will put some doubt in their mind. Garino off the draw. Garino loads up and a save by Carey. The Buckeyes goalie has kept this team within striking distance. He has been sensational all week. When you look at the scouting report, it says Rambo, Peacock, Kelly, Bernard, Rotans. 
You know who the sixth option is every time? It's Bones. He's killing the Let's get the off the midline, please. Front hand two. Thank you. Maryland has won eight out of 14 at the face-off X. Withers wins this one for the Buckeyes. They need it. And they need offense badly. Here's Withers all the way to the cage. Withers gets one back for Ohio State. The senior captain out of Peterborough, Ontario. Ohio State has had two scoring droughts of more than 15 minutes today. But could that be the catalyst for a comeback? Carino has won 7 out of 10. He won 12 out of 14 against Albany and TD Irwin, who came into that game as the number two face-off man in the country. I thought John Tillman's game plan against Trevor Baptiste was masterful on Saturday, the way Maryland was able to neutralize Denver's possession advantage. These two. Today's game track is brought to you by viewing John Garino off the bench, 8 of 11 at the faceoff bench. Tom Carey has been a steel wall in the cage for the Buckeyes. Rotans and Maltz, a couple of goals apiece as we go down to Paul. The biggest face-off of the day for Ohio State. And I got an incredible angle as we look at John Garino, who's been practicing what they call a pinch rake. So he's looking to pinch and then rake it underneath. He just nailed it. Maryland controls the draw. They have possession. Less than five minutes to go in regulation. Marino's ability to time up the whistle ball and use those hands is really light and quick. And he beats you to the pop, light and quick. Stay there. Stay there. The set. Going on with Withers. And Withers wins it for Ohio State. And this is the biggest face-off of the season. Withers and Garino. Maryland can taste it. Two score and two years ago, the Terps last won a title. They've lost nine times on championship day since. Garino wins the draw. And Maryland will play keep away. Carry out of the cage. Timeout John Tillman with 48 seconds called the hog pen. There are four guys. Al Giovinco is one of them that you don't see a lot. Uh, Will Bonaparte as well. They compete hard every day. And Chris Mattis is fantastic. Um, he made such a big difference for us. Last week, the legendary coach Dick Adele told me his advice to your team when they got on this stage would be to nail it. You guys nailed it today. It's been 42 years since this program had a national title. Why? Um, there's so many reasons. Um, obviously, we get great support from our administration. The fans, Chip Mason, they were phenomenal. Um, I have an amazing staff, not only our coaches. Who our Capital One player of the game, Maryland faceoff man John Garino, picked up eight ground balls and came off the bench to win 10 out of 14 draws. And in this tournament, you look at the guys he's neutralized. Trevor Baptiste, the number one face-off man in the country. T.D. Erlin, number two. Jake Withers today, number four.